Wesley So went into the last round of the London Chess Classic with a half-point lead. He took no chances and with the white pieces played very solidly against Maxime Vachier-Lecave and that game ended in a fairly short draw. That meant that uh, Fabiano Caruana could catch him up if he beat Anish Giri, but Caruana was slightly worse in this game. They played for a long time, but in the end, Giri could not capitalise on his slight advantage, and that game ended in a draw. So, Wesley So is the winner of the London Chess Classic 2016 and a really well-deserved victory. He was only in trouble in one game quite early on in the tournament against Levon Aronian. But his defence, even there, his defence in a very tricky situation was superb. Uh, so a well-deserved winner. In the last round, there was really one game that provided all the entertainment, and that was between Levon Aronian and Veselin, Veselin Topalov. Topalov, of course, really has had a nightmare of a tournament going into this round. He had one out of eight, but yeah, he his games are never less than entertaining. And that proved to be the case today. Topalov with the black pieces, you can see his knight looks a bit stranded. But actually, here he can play very safely with a5, giving the knight a square. And here the position is about equal. I think it's quite a favourable King's Indian position for Black, actually. He's very well organised on both sides of the board. But instead, to Parlov, and he really didn't need to do this, he played b5, sacrificing a piece. I mean, it's incredible. You know, he's just, just on tilt at the moment. So at the moment he's got two pawns. Now it's three pawns. If Black can consolidate his position, three pawns beautiful central pawns and queenside pawns as well should be good for black but this move queen c1 is rather annoying hitting this pawn not so easy to defend that pawn and and keep everything together so he sacked one back now it's two pawns again and this pawn advanced threatening b2 queen b1 was played so black has two pawns um and well quite quite good pieces, but I mean, it's still very unclear, this position. I actually thought that, that Aronian was going to consolidate here and, and win with his extra piece, but Topalov managed to create complications, and I'm going to leap way ahead in the game to this moment. White still has, has an extra piece. You can see two knights here, and black has just one minor piece. Black still has two pawns for the piece, these wonderful central pawns. And black is very well coordinated, these rooks in particular. And those knights, although they protect each other, they're, they're pretty static. They can't really do much. Knights, like most minor pieces, need a, a, a firm anchor in the position, ideally protected by a pawn. And... Those knights don't have that here. So very difficult for white to free himself. Now this is after the time control. So there's no, no time pressure here. And I thought that Aronian was going to play rook a8. Trade a pair of rooks. And then that, that makes it easier for white to free the knights. Or maybe, maybe move the, the queen away somewhere sensible. But instead, Aronian played rook a7, um, and I thought this was very odd, because, you know, white really needs to solve the problem of, of these knights. So, d3, and, and certainly, you know, there's, there's no real attack on f7, you know, the queen covers very well. So d3 advancing again, and this, of course, opens up the bishop's diagonal. Rook c7, so... I think Levon's idea was, you know, he wants to somehow cover this knight on c5 and then maybe free this rook for action. I, I don't know. I mean, to me, it looks um, too intricate. You know, this these rooks are very dangerous and, and white simply doesn't have the same kind of coordination. So Topalov simply played h5, a, a strong plan. You know, I, I love 
the h pawns advance if it can go all the way to h3. And queen f3, of course, that's ideal. And and the great thing about attacking with the h pawn is that it doesn't compromise black's position in any way. Here, I'd love to be able to bring the knight back to d2 and, and maybe to f1, uh, but it's just not possible. Rook b2 is fatal. Queen a7 and then bishop d4. I mean, this is just terrible. But Topolov played, uh, excuse me, uh, Aronian played a good move after 15 minutes thought. Queen a4, looking at the e pawn. If rook b4, then the queen goes down to d7. And even though black can take here, well, that endgame should be a draw. Um, so Topolov kept going on with the h pawn, h4. And this now allows queen takes pawn. So white gives back the piece, but the danger is, has passed. And now I thought simply rook d7, just moving behind the pawn. And although h3 is a little bit problematic, you know, you've got to watch out for background tricks. After rook d1, it seemed to me that, you know, eventually or, or, or fairly soon, this pawn is going to drop off, maybe a knight move. Uh, maybe even an f-pawn move and a knight back to f2. White should draw this position. But instead, Aronian, after about a minute's thought, took on h4. Well, presumably he just wanted to eliminate any danger by getting rid of that h-pawn, and then he thought he'd turn his attention to the d-pawn, and also, you know, his king is now safe. But... There is a terrible problem with taking this h-pawn. He'd obviously overlooked the strength of bishop h6, and this is a fantastic move by Topalov. What's the idea? Well, for example, if rook d1, rook b1, white has to trade, and d2, and this pawn is going home. White can sack the knight, but... This is a technical win, even though the pawns are on the same side. Actually, pretty easy for black. What other possible defences? What about blocking? What about knight g5? Well, rook b1, again, is terribly strong. Threat d2. If rook takes d2, goes home. Rook c8 check is interesting. Let's try this. So, takes, takes, king g7. Um, king comes up the board. I mean, it doesn't doesn't make any difference. Or or you can play rook d8 here. Or, uh, yeah, and now check. King g2 and d2, and this wins, threatening d1, because after knight takes, you have rook d1 pinning and winning. You're just going to take that piece. Or after d2, it is possible to play rook takes. This, this might be white's best defence, but I think this should be a technical win for black. I think when these pawns are split, it's going to be pretty easy for the king to march into the position. Aronian tried rook f1, and there's a little trap here. If rook b1, with the same idea as before, let's see, rook d7 takes takes now this looks the same but you'll notice in this case the king is still on g8 not on g7 and that means that white can play knight takes d2 and now the pin but in this case i'm afraid it's a false pin knight e4 saves the day for white and there's a check on f6 this is absolutely typical for technical endgames, many endgames, that often right at the death you have to calculate precisely and look out for all these tricks. Well, after rook f1, Topalov found exactly the right way to go, and this is a very, very nice move. Rook b4 hitting the knight. If the knight moves, for instance, here, well, this this really doesn't help. So f3, protecting the knight. 
and now the rook came down to b2 and this is so nasty cutting the king on the second rank now let's see what happens if rook d7 what's the difference let's see check in this case rook b1 is winning now if the king goes up then this check wins so takes takes check and now d2 and if knight takes d2 we still don't play rook d1 but as the second rank is open then rook b2 is a fatal pin very nice white is simply lost here uh, knight check and d2 and there's simply no defense to the rook coming to e8 and down here knight f2 rook e1 i mean other moves are possible for white but it's it's really completely lost um bishop e3 coming for example and, or, or indeed rook b1 it's gone completely so in this position uh levon aronian resigned well i'm very pleased for uh, Veselin Topalov that he finally won a game but he still finished in last place two out of nine I'm afraid not a tournament he'll remember very fondly so there we go London Chess Classic is over and I think this year's event has really been exceptional there have been some fantastic games of fantastic fighting chess um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it so look out for more uh, videos coming from Powerplay Chess. Of course, if you'd like notification of the next videos, please do subscribe to the channel. You'll find uh, you can click on the box at the end and uh, subscribe. And um, well, thanks very much for watching and all your comments. Bye now.